Freestyle by Gail Galligan is the story of Corey and his friends, who together make up the dance crew 8-Bits. Corey's dance crew is getting ready for a major competition, the Bronx Battle, which will be their last competition before they all graduate 8th grade and the crew ends up scattered across New York City at different high schools. So, obviously, they are determined to win. But problems arise when Corey gets grounded for his poor grades at school and his parents make him take tutoring lessons from his classmate, Suna, who Corey immediately dismisses as being too nerdy and boring. That is, until he catches her practicing her yo-yo tricks. While as Corey and Suna begin to bond over their shared interest in yo-yoing, or throwing, the two begin to spend all their time together, which does mean bailing on the dance crew. So if mounting pressure coming in from all sides... How is Corey supposed to balance the expectations of his parents, school, dance, and his new friend? This was such a unique story that taught me so much about competitive yo-yoing, and it was so fun to learn about this new hobby alongside the main character. And on top of that, the artwork is just bright and it's vibrant. The author does a fantastic job of illustrating her story and really brings these characters' emotions to life. The story just really seemed to pop off the pages. This is a great graphic novel full of middle school shenanigans and learning how to navigate new friendships and hobbies while still valuing the old. Are you looking for a cool sci-fi read? You might want to try Futureland, Battle for the Park by H.D. Hunter. The year is 2048, and Cam Walker and his parents have arrived in Atlanta with their flying theme park, Futureland. Cam's parents dreamed up this attraction and put in years of hard work to make it a reality. They keep it running with the help of Cam's Uncle Trey. It's a real family business. Cam has grown up in Futureland, flying from city to city for people to experience the cutting-edge technology of the theme park with its holograms, virtual reality, and robots called REVs that keep the park running smoothly. Futureland will be in Atlanta for an extended visit, so Cam can attend middle school. This will be his first time attending a real school and making real human friends. Until now, Cam's best friend was Dooley, a REV specially coded to be his friend. But there is a mystery to solve. The Futureland REVs are glitching and behaving oddly. Then some kids go missing, and the last place they were seen was, you guessed it, Futureland. Cam's parents are even acting strange. As he tries to figure out what is going on, he keeps finding a weird symbol of a circle with a rectangle inside it. As the problems in Futureland continue, Cam realizes that he is the only one who can save it. Luckily, Cam has an insider's knowledge of Futureland and its inner workings. But will it be enough? One of the things I like best about this book is how the AI ideas are incorporated, especially machine learning. Futureland seems like a theme park I would like to visit, and Dooley is an intriguing Rev character. Another cool feature is how the action scenes morph into graphic novel form for a few pages, so you can really visual visualize the conflict. If you like theme parks, coding or AI, or just enjoy solving a mystery, then Futureland, Battle for the Park is a good choice for you. Hi, my name is Mrs. Gallette, and I'm the School Library Media Specialist at John Wallace Middle School. I wanted to tell you about a book that I just read that I really enjoyed. It's called Just Like Jackie, and it's by Lindsay Stoddard. It's an intermediate-level Nutmeg nominee this year, so that means it's recommended by, uh, for grades 4, 5, and 6. This book is about a girl named Robinson Hart, who is not your average 11-year-old, she can diagnose and fix cars in her grandpa's shop, as well as any of the grown men. And she's the best baseball player at recess. She has a head full of MLB stats, and she can tap a maple tree to harvest sap for syrup. But the one thing she doesn't do is put up with bullies, especially ones like Alex Carter, who's the biggest bully in the fifth grade. Alex makes fun of Robinson's name and the fact that she doesn't have a mom, which is something her grandpa just doesn't want to talk about. So she doesn't really know anything about that. Alex also doesn't like, or sorry, Alex also likes to bring up the fact that Robinson, with her light skin and dark hair, doesn't look like her grandfather, who is black. Robinson's raised by her grandpa, and he's the only known family she has. 
She loves him more than anyone else in the entire world, and she is just as responsible for him as he is of her, especially because his memory is getting, as she calls it, tired these days. He forgets things that used to be simple for him, like where he put his jacket or how to make their favorite dinners. But Grandpa's the only family Robinson has, and she has to protect him. Grandpa is also a huge baseball fan, especially of the great Jackie Robinson. So you might have an idea of where she got her name. He always tells Robinson to try to keep her cool under pressure, just like Jackie. But when Robbie gets mad at Alex for being a bully, she just can't help but let her fists fly. Now she's stuck in group guidance with her counselor, and she knows it's all Alex's fault. There's just no way she is going to share details about her family with the group guidance crew. Furthermore, the adults at school seem to be poking their noses into Robinson's family business, and she will not let some lady who doesn't even know her f- even know her break up her family. Can Robinson handle her anger and protect the secret about her grandpa struggling to remember? Find out by checking out Just Like Jackie by Lindsay Stoddard at the library. Hi, this is Mrs. Daigle, the Library Media Specialist at Martin Kellogg Middle School. Today, I want to tell you about this awesome book called The Last Kids on Earth, written by Max Brawlier and illustrated by Douglas Holgate. When the actual zombie apocalypse hits Jack Sullivan's town, everything goes crazy. Jack manages to escape his school and hide out in his treehouse until the worst of the disaster seems to settle down. This book actually starts when Jack decides to come out of his treehouse and discovers that all the adults seem to be gone. And that's where the title, The Last Kids on Earth, comes from. What's even worse, there are zombies and monsters running around everywhere. Now Jack has to figure out how to meet up with his best friend, Quint, and rescue his crush, June, and deal with a giant, terrifyingly smart monster that Jack calls Blarg, and deal with his school's biggest bully, all while avoiding the zombies and keeping his treehouse stocked with snacks. This book is the first in a series, and there's about 10 books out in the series so far. It's a great blend of action-packed storytelling and hilarious illustrations. If you like graphic novels, adventure, monster stories, or funny books, this book is for you. The Last Mapmaker by Christina Soontornbot. This book is about a girl named Sai. She lives in a sea village. Sai lives in the very poorest section of town. She is 12, and at age 12, all the children in this sea village get matching clothes and a chance to get a job. Then, on their 13th birthday, They get lineal links to wear as a bracelet or necklace, depending on how many links they receive. The links represent the family status in the kingdom. Sai is dreading her 13th birthday, for she will get no links because she is poor and her father is not an upstanding citizen. The links the other kids get will give them the opportunity for an education or a really great job. What is Sai going to do with no lineal links? Before Sai's 13th birthday, she has the chance to work with map maker Payoon Wan Gai. She does such a wonderful job that Master Wan Gai gives Sai the opportunity to go on a sailing expedition to map the seas. Sai does not tell her father about this and tries to sneak off, but he has her trapped in their tiny apartment due to another situation. But Sai manages to break free. She runs through town being chased by her dad, just barely making it onto the ship. Now the adventure begins. While the ship is sailing, Sai begins making friends. She's also avoiding other sailors. But why? Are the people she's avoiding the ones she can't trust? 
are the ones she is making friends with truly trustworthy. Sai thinks she has it all figured out. Until the great storm, the big fight, someone falling overboard, and Sai being cast out with stowaway bow. If you like to read books that you can't put down, that keeps you on the edge of your seat, that makes you wonder what's going to happen next, and places you, the reader, on a great adventure along with the characters in the story. This is the book for you. The Marvelers by Danielle Clayton. 11-year-old Ella Durand comes from a family of conjurers in New Orleans and is the first conjurer admitted to the prestigious Arcanum Training Institute for Marvelers. Students come from all over the world to study and hone their skills. Ella is immediately subjected to prejudice because they don't like or trust conjure magic and she is seen as lesser. She connects with fellow misfit and roommate Bridget, who hates magic, and Jason, the youngest in a large Marveler family. Just when Ella is starting to find her way, a notorious criminal escapes from her supposedly inescapable prison, allegedly with conjurer help. On top of that, her mentor disappears just when he starts explaining to Ella her heritage at the school. With her friend's help, Ella works to find her teacher and clear her family's name. What a great start to a new series. Readers will see similarities to Harry Potter, but this story brings in a richness of different cultures and customs. It also addresses real world issues and prejudices. Overall, a marvelous book. I can't wait for the next one in the series. Hi, this is Miss Bailey, and while I realize it is no longer spooky season, I love horror all year long. And so I present to you Spirit Hunters by Ellen O. Don't let the cover fool you. This book is more than just a simple ghost story. Like with a lot of ghost stories, our main character Harper just moved to a new town with her family into this huge creepy old house. It is, of course, that one house that everyone in town talks about because it has such a disturbing history. You know, with people dying in it. At first, Harper isn't really paying attention to all that. She's definitely more angry about moving than anything else. Her parents wanted Harper to have a fresh start. Back in their old city, Harper survived both a fire and a traumatizing injury, but has blocked all memories of these events. But her anger at moving must be why the house feels so wrong, right? Except Michael, her little brother, starts to act differently. Suddenly, Michael is withdrawn, angry, and violent. And yep, there's that imaginary friend that only Michael can see. Harper realizes that she's witnessing an evil spirit slowly trying to possess her brother. As Harper discovers this, some of her memories from the past start to resurface. Memories that might tie into what she's experiencing right now. And she might be the only person who can try to save her brother before it's too late. Please know that this book has some seriously gruesome and scary moments in it. Definitely for those who love a good scare. The Switch by Roland Smith. Henry Ludd Carter has just turned 13 and got a brand new cell phone. Unfortunately, he didn't really get to use it because the very next day, the power went out and never came back on. Not just the electricity, but everything powered by electronics, including modern cars and airplanes, no longer functioned. Henry lives on his family's vast farm with his large extended family. His uncle Edgar is former military and had recently put up a monstrosity, also known as a wooden turbine. Edgar thinks it was some kind of EMP, an electromagnetic pulse, that fried all the electronics in the region, or maybe the world. Society descends into lawlessness. Henry's father runs the Portland Zoo and doesn't return and is assumed missing or worse. The Luds have amassed many resources, have a working semi-truck, and regularly go out into the city to trade. One day, Henry joins his uncles Chester and Gino on a trading mission. When the truck is hijacked along with his uncles, 
Henry is alone in the city. Henry must rely on his skills to survive this dangerous place and get back to the farm in one piece. If you enjoy dystopian stories, this one is for you. It reminds me of The Walking Dead, minus the zombies.